right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Laura Penn, who is in the Geneva area in Switzerland. How are you doing, Dr. Laura? Feeling good. Yeah, and I love your studio. What a great studio. Look at that. I need, I need something to give me a studio my home. like this. My home away from home. Yeah. A little bit of planned action wouldn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, exactly. There you go. Um, and uh, and Dr. Laura is the founder of the Leadership Speaking uh, School, where we train global leaders and change makers how to speak in public. And what we wanted to talk today about was the power of authentic pre presence in leadership speaking. And uh, before we even get into the whole subject, if you like, uh, uh, Laura, one thing I would I would like you to do is maybe define what authenticity really means. Because as we were just, just discussing before coming on air, it it is the it ha it must be the twenty twenty one buzzword of the year because everybody's throwing around authenticity. Yes, my version of this, John, is laying down your armor, having the courage to dance like no one is watching and just doing you. This is about breathing your truth, living it, um, and being okay with that. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, because it's a funny thing, because people, and I'm probably guilty of myself, talk about how to be more authentic. And I think that that's always, that kind of leads you into thinking that there are, it's almost like that you can hack authenticity, right? Mm. And you can't. Not really. I mean, it's a state of mind. And I feel like it really responds to your level of personal development. Are you ready to lay down your armor? Are you ready to dance like no one is watching? Um, what's going on around you where you feel safe enough and grounded enough to do those things? And FYI, when you finally get there, you finally feel free. Yeah, I always think that that's that I, I, I love that you said that because I always think the most liberating thing and it's something I wish I'd have learned a lot uh, earlier in life, but the the self awareness, self awareness, and then the confidence to, as you say, be your authentic self. But before you can be your authentic self, you have to be aware of what, you have to be self aware. And that's a journey that yeah, it's a difficult enough journey for people to go on. It is, it is. And people are at different stages of what I call being awake to that. And, you know, you get a real wake up call to keep the metaphor going when you are speaking, which is my you know, world, speaking in front of an audience. And if you have that awareness of what am I doing? Who's this person? I don't recognize myself. And if you feel bad afterwards, then this is a moment where something either will stay the same, you'll keep doing that, or something needs to shift. And this is a place, John, where a lot of people wake up and they're like, mm -hmm. wait, something's wrong here. Something's out of balance. And this is where the beginning of, well, I'm not being myself. I'm not true to who I am. I'm not using my true voice, where all that starts to come online. So yeah, this is a state. Yeah, I, I, and what's really interesting about what, what you just said there, um, Laura, is, is the fact that you have to take it to notice it, right? You have to be observing and you have to take time out then and take a step back and actually look at uh, and, and, and explore these things. And we kind of live in a society today where the pervasive thing is, oh, don't no, just keep moving forward, like easy, quick, you know, do whatever. But that actually stepping back and maybe having a moment of silence to actually consider these things. That's what's really critical. But that's kind of almost counterculture. It is counterculture. And, you know, we're on different sides of the pond, you and I. Mm -hmm. In Europe, perhaps I can generalize and say that things are a little bit less hectic and, and a little more slow. I feel there's more time to reflect. I feel it's more time to breathe. Uh, but as soon as I go stateside, it gets hot fast. <laughs> People are moving around quickly. They're talking quickly. They, they don't listen to each other. And somebody, the, the classic thing for the Europeans versus the Americans is if somebody asks you how you're doing here in Europe, you'll take time to give an answer. But if you do that in New York City, say somebody will say, how you doing? And not expect an answer. So yeah, there's, there's a difference in pace. But wherever you are, I feel like if this is feeling bad for you, if you're connecting to this not feeling right, then you need to start shifting something. I like to say you need to stop, drop, and make a bold decision. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that's I, I, I really would underline that. I think that's perfect because I do think that if there's one thing, I think this started pre-pandemic, but certainly during the pandemic, I think a lot of people started to just started to question everything about what they're doing and their purpose. Uh, and I think that's the thing. I think a lot more people are thinking about their their purpose. And as we get back to the topic like of leadership, I think that is so critical is understanding from a leadership point about what is your actual purpose, both personally and professionally? Very much so. You know, this is going to color how you're going to show up in front of your audiences. Why are you there? I like to talk about that as a motivation. And for all of my students, I say, have a motivation. Why are you in front of that audience? It's not about the to-do list of what you want to achieve, what you want to say. That's not a motivation. Your motivation is your purpose, is your why. A very simple one is my motivation is to enjoy myself or my motivation is to light up this room with how much love I have for this topic, right? So that's a motivation. And when you have that, it serves your presence as a speaker. It serves your voice as a speaker. It serves your body language. And all of these things then become congruent and you package your message authentically. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic, uh, fantastic advice because I do think that um, I mean, I could I just speak for myself. I know over the years, like I haven't done plenty of speaking and that there maybe have been times when I haven't shown up knowing what my motivation is. And, and I definitely think that that's a great takeaway for everybody there is really understand your motivation, whether it whether you're doing a meeting on Zoom with people, whether you're speaking to people in a in a room, whether it's a big conference or whatever, that that motivation piece is, is key. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. I mean, a, a very simple anecdote. I was doing a keynote in front of a room of 100 finance leaders, and I write my motivations on a little post-it note that I put near the timer at the base of the stage, and it had one word on it. It said, it's a little cheesy, <laughs> but bear with me, it said love, hmm. because that's where I wanted to come from. I didn't want to come from a head place and be all facts and knowledge. I wanted to come from a heart place and be real and really talk to them about issues that could help support them to connect with their audiences. And that's how simple it can be, just a post-it note. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I'd won many years ago with a big group of people, and um, there was one person that in that room, uh, I don't know if it's 20, 30 people, but my goal was to make them smile. Yeah. <laughs> that was my, I mean, I... I had all the other stuff to deliver. I mean, all the, as you said, all the facts and all of that. But my whole goal was to make this one yeah. very stern person laugh. And I did. Did it work? Did it work? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, good yeah, for yeah. you. Bravo. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, on the communication side, certainly from leadership, I mean, there is, there probably has been a lot of struggles over the past year or two because maybe some leaders have had to move into a different mode of communicating. Maybe they have uh, distributed workforces now, you know, virtual, they have to use electronic, they have to use Zoom and all of that. And I think a lot of people haven't put enough thought into how do I optimize all of the ways that I'm communicating as opposed to just kind of hang on to, I wish I could get back to this one mode. Yeah, that's hard. There's, there are a lot of balls in the air right now. But I think it has to come down to what we already talked about, which is purpose. Why are you there? You know, and a really big piece that I feel a lot of speakers miss, especially online, but live too, is they do not warm their bodies up before they go on. So it's like rolling in from whatever you're doing in life and expecting a great presentation or a great moment with your audience. If you're not getting your instrument ready, your instrument being your voice, your body, if you're not warming that up, you're not going to be high performance. And all you need to do is look to the left and think, well, what are other performing artists doing? Because speaking is a performing art. And there isn't a dancer, a singer, a musician, or an actor worth their salt who doesn't warm their instrument up first. So I feel like people need to professionalize this concept and get their instruments ready, have that little post-it note motivation and get ready to serve the audience. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I think unfortunately very few people warm up before uh, delivering speeches because they just see it as part of what they do or or speaking so yeah I, I I totally I totally agree with that I think there's a lot of things missing out of the the toolkit for for a lot of speakers um and the other part is as you were saying at the beginning is being being your real self being authentic being your authentic self that's a scary thing for some people when they're faced with a large audience 
Yeah, it is. And it, it can paralyze people. But we have to go back to that level of, are you ready? If you're mm -hmm. not ready, don't even bother. Uh, it's too much to ask. There is a journey that you need to get on. It's like you have to get on a path first. Again, it's being awake to it. And I see it as, I love metaphors. And it's like a seed that is closed, right? That's, that's the state of not being awake. Mm -hmm. But then when something happens, a, a trigger of some sort happens to that seed, it begins to open and that tiny delicate sprout starts to come out. And that process of growing from that tiny delicate sprout to popping through the soil and then finding the orientation of the sun and growing and thriving, that's a journey. So to get to authenticity, you got to get on that journey first. Yeah, no, that's that's a that's a very interesting concept. No, I agree with it, and I agree that you have to get on a journey because, um, you know, as we discussed earlier, you know, authenticity is a thing that's being thrown around a lot of the time. But it really is a it really is a journey inwards yeah. and then outwards. Completely, and there's no quick fix solution. I am so done, John, <laughs> with people telling me, "Oh, three step formula." five minute solution. That's some BS. And if somebody tells you that they're lying, because this is not the kind of thing that you can achieve in a short time frame. This takes work, or what I like to call sweat equity. And you need to do the work in order to deliver the work. Well, yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and unfortunately, I think, uh, unfortunately, we do live in this shortcut culture, this world of yeah. easy and everything should be easy. And you should be able to, there's probably a, an, uh, there's probably a, an ad on Instagram for authenticity. You know, if you click here, like <laughs> three, 19, 19, yeah, 1999, <laughs> 1999, <laughs> it's out there and run the other way, people. It, uh, but but it's so but it's again again what you're talking about is somewhat counterculture today is actually yeah. taking the time and working hard and realizing that it's a journey yeah i love how you've used the word counterculture twice because that is what i am in a nutshell i disrupt counterculture it's not or i disrupt culture to be mm -hmm. counter i am not okay with the status quo the status quo in terms of speaking again this is my world yeah. how do people communicate how do people serve messages uh it's not on the way it's working. So I am shaking trees and making leaves fall off so that people notice and wake up and reorient. I just finished a TEDx uh, experience, my fourth one. Oh, great. And, yeah. And the theme was adapt. No, it was, it was disrupt, adapt, and change. And that's exactly what we need to be doing as part of this counterculture movement because the status quo for how we're communicating is not working. Yeah, and if you think about it, and everybody can think about this, how many times have you shown up for a, a, a talk or a speech or tuned into something, but your expectations have been, you know, well, maybe if I hear something interesting, fine, but your expectations are kind of low. And I think that's unfortunate is that yeah. we have pretty low expectations from a lot of this. We do. And there's a waste of time in that equation. Yep. Uh, and we all know that time is the only thing we can't get any more of, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then there's sort of this numbing that happens and life's too short to numb. And I think that that, that sort of, it's, it's, it's self-selective. You, you start, to, you start mm -hmm. to avoid situations that numb you. But if anything, this is a shout out to the speakers out there who need to be disrupted, whose status quo doesn't work. And there's a simple way to know if it's working or not. I like to tell my students and my two teenage children, I say, if it feels right, it is right. But on the other side of that coin, if it feels wrong, it is wrong. And that's where the stop, drop and make a bold decision comes in. So this is about being aware. If something's not feeling right, make a bold decision to change something. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think uh, today is, uh, as we talked earlier, is people are craving a little bit more than they used to. I mean, they're craving this authenticity. They want to know. And I think it all comes from that from that need for connection, because yes. I think even pro pre pandemic, uh, we were doing a lot to try and stop people actually connecting, <laughs> communicating directly with each other. You know, we're using all these technologies and things which are great and i love the efficiency and we're a technology company ourselves but it doesn't replace connecting no. properly no we're starved for it look here we're in a drought when it comes to connection and we all can feel it it's a feeling of wanting more and that little moment where we are connected it fills us and i think it's really important to just take a step back and think about 
the fact that we're very sensual creatures, right? Sensual mm-hmm. in the sense that we have five senses, yep. sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. And what are we editing out online? No taste, no touch, no smell. We've got two senses out of our amazing other ones that we're really working with. And our eyes want to see color and plants <laughs> and texture yeah. and depth, right? We want to create a visual experience for the people who are watching us. And the sound needs to be spot on. So what can you do as a speaker if this is still your virtual, you know, if you're still speaking virtually a lot, what can you do to enhance these things? Because that's connection too. When people are using their senses, the two senses that we have access to online. And obviously when we, we go live again, we can create a, a more, you know, rich experience in a sensory way. But let's not forget that. This is also why we feel so starved because our senses are not being nourished. Yeah, that, that's a that's a that's a great point, and and you're correct. Yeah, we only have the two when we're when we're virtual, and a lot of times people don't don't use um, don't use both of them. But I, but just coming back to what you're saying is, and I think this is an incredibly important point for people to take away is is the idea of creating an experience for your audience, whether it's a it's a small meeting, a big gathering, a large com, or whatever it is, is that your job is not just to go out and deliver whatever content you have. Your, your job is to create an ex, a memorable yeah. experience. And if I can add to that, your job yeah. is to serve your audience, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, a central tenant of leadership speaking is that it's not about you. It's about your audience, that you are the one that is in authentic service to them. It's not the me show, your agenda, your to-do list. It's about how can I be an authentic service and give the audience what they need? And in small ways, how can I enhance the visual? How can I enhance the audio? How can I make this ex- an experience where they feel connected to their own humanity? Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's that that's really good. Connected to their own humanity, and I think that's mm. I, I I I love that you said that because let's face it, I think most of our experience of, of talks and speeches and all is that the audience is back here, and the speakers up there, and yes, there may be a bit of banter, you may whatever, but there's still a gap between both. There is, and we need to fill that gap with heart space. What are we really here for, right? We're here for the audience. And if you're not serving the audience, then what's it for? Like, what are you really Mm -hmm. doing? And what are they taking away from this experience? One of my favorite words in the English language is presentation, which comes from the Latin word presentare. It means a gift to serve something, like to put it down on an altar. And if we reframe our mainframe and think about presentations or speaking in front of audiences like gifts that we are giving, then we're going to do a lot more to take care of that package. Yeah, exactly. Because I think uh, I think uh, yeah, if people use that that, that analogy, um, I think there's a lot of not very good gifts being given out. So maybe it's time <laughs> to some bad time gifts to... being yeah. given and yeah, return policy gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. But I love that. I love the way you've, you've uh, framed it there. That's perfect. Is, is a gift is you're here to give a gift. And yeah. let's face it, when, when you give a gift to someone, you want that gift, you want their eyes to light up. You want them to go, yes. Oh my goodness, I can't believe, you know, you got me that or whatever it is. So this, so you should be looking for the same thing from the audience. Like they're after they've listened to you, they should be going, wow, that was a fantastic yes. gift. That was a great exactly. investment of my time. Exactly. And those lights, you know, behind their eyes light up, the smiles, the nods, all of that is communication in your direction saying that what you're doing is working. Yeah, no, absolutely. And therefore, I mean, it's uh, next time anybody does a a speech or a talk to anybody, uh, you can pretty much gauge um, how much of how good a gift you've given by how excited the gift receivers are. Absolutely. My, My measurement, my metric is, how many people come up and talk to me afterwards? <laughs> yeah. If that's a very small amount, the gift wasn't very well received. <laughs> it's harder online because people don't really stick around to talk to you as, as it were, but live, that's a real great metric. Uh, are you connecting to people? And do they come up and want more from you afterwards? That is a great way to assess that. Yeah, and the, and the fact that they actually want to come up and engage yeah. with you on a, on a personal level means that yes. yeah, you, ha- you have communicated your authenticity. Yes, exactly. This is full circle coming back to the authenticity. It's, yeah, it's the- really a, a package deal. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So, what would be your last piece of advice for for somebody who who says, "Okay, I'm I'm listening to this, and yeah, I can see I fall into some of those traps, but I just I I don't know how to bring the real me out." Mm, ooh. What do they need to do? Well, I think one of the biggest ingredients besides the waking up that I talked about earlier is courage. So my challenge is to tell that person this challenge, dare to be remarkable, dare to be seen, because when we really see you, we connect with you. Wow, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, dare to be seen. And I do agree in, in courage. And I think that's the other part about courage, but it's not the absence of fear. It's the, it's, you know, the ability to, to or face your fears. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's fun. That's fun to, yeah, I have a... I have a wall hanging here somewhere with a saying like that on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, nice. um, but yeah, no, I know to I totally agree with you. I, I think that, that that's a fantastic way of putting it and a beautiful way to end. And so all of uh, Dr. Laura's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell us a little bit more about you and the Leadership Speaking School. Sure. So what we do is we transform leaders and change makers into people who are accessible and memorable and who can connect with their audiences authentically. Mm -hmm. I like to call myself an authenticity whisperer. I can see that you are in there. And my job is to very gently, very lovingly and very competently open the layers of yourself that you've closed down to reveal your authenticity again so that you can show up as the best version of yourself as a speaker. This is what I do with my students. And we're very active in Switzerland because that's where we're based, but we're global. We do this work virtually. We do it live. Um, this is this is my life's work. Yeah, no, and fantastic work it is too. So I would definitely encourage you to go check out the Leadership Speaking School, regardless of where you are in the globe, uh, because uh, as we've discussed throughout this, is we we need to up the level of communication uh, and up the 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 connectedness. You know, we've done a fantastic job of of making of really dumbing down communication and kind of removing all the human elements from it. So it's time it's time to bring it all back. Bring it back. Bring it back bring it soon. Back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, listen, thanks, Dr. Laura. My name is John Golden. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you. It was a privilege. Yeah.